You may have heard that Pope Francis recently declared that Catholic priests can bless same-sex unions under certain circumstances. And then shortly thereafter, a priest in Italy erected a nativity scene featuring two women caring for the baby Jesus. Are those things related? Well, according to the testimony of the priest himself, yes they are, as we will see on today's show. So what does all of this mean for the Catholic Church? What's the real problem underneath the noise and sensationalism? Is it emblematic of a larger problem across Christianity broadly? All that and more on our midweek show called Same-Sex Nativity and Papal Blessings. Welcome. All right, welcome back. Happy Wednesday. It is hump day. Uh, if you are working a Monday through Friday job, then today marks your halfway point, and I'm glad that you are spending it with us. We are, con I was about to say we're continuing the theme from yesterday, but that's not true. The only uh, similarity between today's show and yesterday's show is the idea of blasphemy. But the story itself is rather different, and the point we're going to draw is rather different as well. So let's get... Actually, I have some housekeeping for you. Um, I failed to mention this yesterday till the very end, but I want to do so right at the beginning. Um, please take a moment to consider signing up for my personal email list. I'm, I'm doing a newsletter once or twice a week. And so it's it's kind of a fun thing to be part of just for the the devotionals and the you know, the interaction or whatever, right? It's It's not going to take you long to read through. It might brighten your day a little bit. But the actual reason I'm asking is because I am working on a big project. It is a big Bible study product, actually, that I want to make available for purchase to the world um, that will introduce the, the student, so to speak, to the main themes of the Bible and ultimately lay the foundation for thorough, in-depth studies of the uh, apocalyptic prophecies in the book of Daniel and the Old Testament and in Revelation in the New Testament, um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm legitimately trying to make like the premier Bible study course available on the internet today. So if you, if that sounds interesting to you, if you want to be part of it, then sign up for the email list because I have a special bonus for my email subscribers. There, uh, it will be a rather deep discount off the purchase price. Uh, as a thank you for having faith in me, even at this early stage. So stevehicksandassociates.com slash giveaway is how you do that. It is free to sign up and I really, really appreciate it. Now let's get to the show. Okay. You may have heard, as I mentioned in the opener, that there's been some goings on in the Catholic church recently uh, regarding homosexuality and family units that have homosexual parents uh, or, or parent figures. What's been going on? Well, we're going to start with the controversy of the moment. Um, this article is actually a few weeks old now. It's dated December 26, the day after Christmas. Um, but it's blasphemous. That's interesting. It's actually from the Daily Wire, the same source from which we got yesterday's blasphemous article. <laughs> but uh, blasphemous, a church slammed for same-sex nativity scene. What's going on? Daily Wire, tell us about it. A church in Italy, and that's a Catholic church, of course, a church in Italy uh, took considerable backlash for its, quote, dangerous and, quote, blasphemous nativity scene featuring a figure of a second woman in the place of Joseph alongside the figures of the Virgin Mary and the baby Jesus. The Church of Saints Peter and Paul in, I'm not even going to try to pronounce that, someplace in Italy, is under fire after Father Vitaliano della Sala decided it would be a good idea to have a, quote, more inclusive nativity in his church. I wanted to show with this scene that families are no longer just the traditional ones, della Sala told the outlet. And then we have this little picture of the priest with the nativity scene in question there. And you see it is, in fact, two women. One of them is dressed in rainbow. <laughs> And they are caring for the baby Jesus, uh, just like the angel behind them is. You see also the, the priest himself is wearing some sort of rainbow garment around his neck. So I don't know if that was intentional or not. 
Article continues, in our parishes, we see more and more children from the new types of families that exist and are part of our society. Children of separated and divorced people, gay couples, single people, young mothers. In his response, he also referred people to Pope Francis's recent move allowing priests to bless same-sex couples. The same-sex nativity scene, with one of the Mary figures draped in rainbow colors, sparked an online petition for its removal. Um, it was started... Yeah, actually, I don't need any of that. I wanted to stop with Pope Francis uh, allowing the blessing of same-sex couples. You can read the rest of the article on your own. Of course, it is in the show notes. So what we're getting here is that this priest and this church took it upon himself and themselves to reimagine the nativity scene with two moms instead of a mom and a dad, right? Not Mary and Joseph, but Mary and Mary or Mary and Mary prime, whatever they're where it's happening in their minds there. But it's not, a, it's not random when questioned about it. This priest puts the responsibility at the feet of the Pope, Pope Francis. He says, I, I did this only because Pope Francis said I can bless same-sex unions now. So then we have to stop talking about this particular thing and take a step back and go to the Pope's declaration. So I have a New York Post article here that talks about that issue uh, called Pope Francis approves blessings for same-sex couples if the rituals don't resemble marriage. This one is dated December 18 of last year. It reads, Pope Francis has formally approved allowing priests to bless same-sex couples with a new document explaining a radical change in Vatican policy by insisting that people seeking God's love and mercy shouldn't be subject to, quote, an exhaustive moral analysis to receive it. The document from the Vatican's Doctrine Office, released Monday, elaborates on a letter Francis sent to two conservative cardinals that was published in October. In that preliminary response, Francis suggested such blessings could be offered under some circumstances if they don't confuse the ritual with the sacrament of marriage. The new document repeats that rationale and elaborates on it, reaffirming that marriage is a lifelong sacrament between a man and a woman, and it stresses that blessings should not be conferred at the same time as a civil union using set rituals or even with the clothing and gestures that belong in a wedding. And then, of course, it goes on from there. Um, but that's kind of the, the nugget on which this nativity controversy was based. The idea here is that increasingly it seems... How do I say this the right way? Increasingly in our world, we are finding homosexual couples, like two men or two women, who are claiming that they are not opposed to Christ nor the church and are desiring to be part of it or to receive the blessings of it um, despite their lifestyle choices, okay? Now, I'm not here to adjudicate that controversy with you, okay? I'm, I am willing to say that there is literally not a single word that is positive toward homosexuality in this entire book, cover to cover, okay? That's what I'm willing to say because that's just an objective truth. <laughs> you cannot find anywhere in here something that is actively pro-homosexuality. But the kind of condemnation that has often been levied at homosexual people from a religious standpoint is also not really found in here. Um, now, of course, you can make all sorts of arguments and all sorts of arguments have been made, and I'm not here to adjudicate it. I'm just saying that there is definitely a gray area when it comes to the grace of God, right? Because if God's grace can overlook the sin of like a murderer or a pedophile or, you know, whatever, some horrible, horrible crime that, that we would absolutely go straight to the death penalty for, <laughs> then why not homosexuality, you know? And so God's grace always muddies up everything because God's grace is greater than all of us. So that's where this is all coming from. The Pope says, 
the world is increasingly non-traditional and the world is increasingly friendly toward religiously oriented homosexual couples. Therefore, the church wants to acknowledge that and to offer a blessing of sorts to those people as long as everyone involved recognizes that that relationship is not a marriage and it's not a substitute for a marriage. And um, yeah, I mean, that's it. It's not a marriage nor a substitute, but according to the Pope, it can receive the blessing of God nonetheless. Not, not an equivalent blessing to a marriage, but a blessing from God for the individual people involved. So that's the backstory. And this Italian priest kind of turned that idea up to 11 and said, okay, well, if, if we can do that, if we can bless homosexual unions in that way, then why not be more inclusive of those people in our iconography, right? In our imagery, why not give Jesus two moms in a nativity scene? And in, in the... <laughs> Let's see. At the bottom of the New York Post article, I think, is it the New York Post? Uh, bottom of one of the articles. Now that I mentioned it, I have to find it. Now at the bottom of bottom of the third article that we haven't looked at yet, there's actually a link to one a nativity scene with two dads, right? Two Josephs <laughs> instead of two Marys. So this is kind of out there. It's in the world, but this priest was saying like. I want all of these non-traditional people to feel included, right? I want to be an inclusive church. Um, and so therefore this controversy happened. I will speak to that controversy a little bit from the Bible, although it's not going to be what you might think. I'm not going to praise, nor am I going to condemn, right? I'm going to give other principles that I believe are at work underneath the surface of this controversy. But before we get there, we have to do a little bit of media malfeasance analysis first. So that brings us to our third article. This comes from a publication called The Advocate, advocate.com. This is very clearly a pro-LGBTQ plus website. Everything about it is advocating for um, LGBTQ plus people. And I believe, if memory serves me correctly... The full acronym, at least at the time that I learned it, was LGBTQQI2S. Somebody let me know if I got that correct. <laughs> anyway, so this, this article of The Advocate doesn't say anything different than the Daily Wire article. In terms of the facts that are presented, it adds nothing to the story nor does it take away anything from the story. It's almost an identical article, but look at the headline. And as you read through the article, you'll see other examples of this too. Look at the, the headline. Whereas the Daily Wire says, church slammed for same-sex nativity scene, which is just a statement of fact, right? The church was in fact heavily criticized for doing that thing. The Advocate title is conservative lawmakers lose it over Jesus having two moms in church's nativity scene. It's like, why? That's an attack, you know? That That's not even pretending to be an objective news source. That is clearly advocacy from the beginning to the end. And of course, it's called the advocate, <laughs> um, but it's activism. You, you are not a reporter. You're an activist when you when you preach that way, right? Conservative lawmakers lose it. Did they lose it? Anyway, you be the judge. So now that we're done reading our way through the articles, let's turn our attention to the Bible and let's draw some conclusions here. And again, the conclusion is not going to be gay people are evil, nor is it going to be gay people are awesome, right? Because that's up to God. God is on the throne and not me. I want to bring us underneath it. What is the theological problem that led to this controversy in the first place. Will it surprise you if I take you to Exodus chapter 20 and we read together the second commandment of God? Because that's where I'm going. And I believe that is the heart of the problem. 
not homosexuals, not lesbians, not errant priests even. The second commandment, which notably, I should mention, the Catholic Church doesn't even have this commandment. They have their own version of the Ten Commandments, and our second commandment, which we're about to read, is not among them. They just like took it out entirely. So it it makes sense as to why this has happened in the Catholic uh, ecosystem, so to speak, but it doesn't make it any more correct. Anyway, the second commandment of God, this is Exodus 20, starting in verse 4. It says, this is God speaking, he says, You shall not make for yourself a carved image, any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generations of those who hate me, but showing mercy to thousands, to those who love me and keep my commandments. This says don't make images of stuff. And if... The Catholic Church broadly, and this particular Catholic priest specifically, if they were following that commandment to not make images of stuff, then there would not be a nativity scene to be concerned about, right? There wouldn't be one with Mary and Joseph. There wouldn't be one with two Marys. There wouldn't be one with two Josephs. It just wouldn't exist. God said it a long time ago. If you make images of stuff, you're going to get in trouble. Now, this commandment says don't worship them. And you can make the argument that nobody's worshiping that nativity scene. But honestly, don't you think maybe, maybe the people at the advocate kind of are, you know, they're turning it into their religious crusade that they want more lesbian nativity scenes. You know, I, I think God knows what he's talking about. And I think we are all wise to take him at his word. If we all did not make images of religious things, then this controversy simply wouldn't exist. Like We would not have a show today. There'd be nothing to talk about. If only God's people kept the commandments. Go figure. Hmm. I think, just like yesterday, this is a, a text that I didn't have in my notes, but if we go to the book of Revelation in chapter t- chapter 14, we see in verse uh, verse 12, a description of God's people at the end of time. And it's not an ethnic description. It's not a gender description. It's not any of the kind of categories that we break ourselves into these days. Look how God describes his people at the end of time. Here are those who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. So in other words, God says, you want to be one of my people at the end of time, you have to actually keep my commandments. And we're talking about a problem that only exists because of widespread disregard of his commandments. So there you go. I mean, in my mind, this is really a straightforward issue. But there's another issue at work too. And we find this one in 1 John chapter 2. Now, 1 John is not the same as the gospel of John. If you already know this, please forgive my being pedantic, but there are three little itty bitty books also called John, toward the end of the New Testament, right before Revelation. One, two, and three, John. And we are looking at the first of those three, 1 John chapter 2. Uh, if you don't already know these verses by heart, you should you should know them by heart. Like, tattoo them on your brain and don't forget them, because, well, let me read them first, then I'll tell you why. Chapter 2, verses 15, 16, and 17, the instruction is, do not love the world, or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away, and the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. The reason I bring that up in today's show is because that is also a a command or a principle that is being completely ignored in this particular controversy. Uh, The priest wants his church to be more like the world. I mean, he's, he quite literally said in in the daily wire article um, that it would be a good idea to have a 
quote, more inclusive nativity in his church. This is DEI stuff, diversity, equity, and inclusion, right? So I don't know if you're familiar with DEI, but that's a really big deal right now um, in a way that maybe will deserve its own show in the future, its own maybe week-long episode in the future, but not for today. My point today is this man loves the world enough that he wants to actually conform his church into the image of the fallen world instead of the opposite, which is how it's supposed to work, right? Where the fallen world looks at the church holding up the standards of God and then chooses to uh, repent and conform to that image of God. The priest has it backwards. He says, yeah, we've got the things of God, but I want it to look more like the world around me. Maybe if he wasn't so much in love with the world or the things of the world, then again, we would not have a show today, right? Because we'd all be following Jesus the way we're supposed to. Now, the reason that I say you need to tattoo these verses on your brain is because they are so profoundly important. They identify three things that go wrong in life. And I will suggest every single bad thing that ever happens is because of one of those three things. It is the lust of your flesh. So it feels good, therefore I do it. Or it's the lust of your eyes. Like it looks good, therefore I want it. Or it's the pride of life. It makes me feel good about myself. It makes me feel awesome. Right? So every bad thing that ever happens is one or more of those three things all the way back to the Garden of Eden where it was all three. The devil in the form of a snake tricked Eve into eating from the forbidden tree because when you read through that, that story in Genesis 3, she saw that the, that the fruit was good. She knew it was good for food, right? So it would, it looked good, it felt good, and it came with the promise from Satan that it would make her more like God as a result. So it feels good in her body, it looks good to her eyeballs, and it puffs her up about how awesome she can be. And it plunged the entire world into sin and death. Right. So I I mean, I literally can't come up with a better, like succinct set of passages to help you avoid trouble in life than first John chapter two, verses 15 through 17. If you just follow that command, that instruction, you will avoid so much pain and heartache um, that it's like your life would be completely different. You won't even recognize your own life anymore if you just prayerfully take this problem to God and say, Lord, rid me of these things. In Jesus' name, amen. That's going to be our prayer uh, for to close the show today. Let us all, well, I mean, we're going to pray for Father, what's his name, in Italy. We're going to pray for our billion plus Catholic Catholic brethren uh, all across the world who are having to navigate this confusing instruction from the Pope and all of its downstream effects. So yes, we're going to pray for all of that. But for our own individual selves, we're going to pray for victory as it is described in 1 John chapter 2. Join me now. Loving Father, first, we definitely want to remember all of the players involved in the controversy that we discussed today. Bring these ideas to the, to the remembrance of the priest in question. Help him to understand that the role of the church is to elevate the world to God's standards, not the other way around. And if, and I can't imagine it has not, so since this has caused a controversy within his church, I pray that it will not harm the church, that the saints who, who attend worship there will find a way to be unified, even as they might be personally divided, and it may not be a handicap or a hindrance to the furtherance of your kingdom and gospel. Lord, have mercy upon this man, have mercy upon those parishioners, have mercy upon everybody involved, even have mercy upon poor, poor excuse me, Pope Francis. Um, for he may not know what he is doing here. And I believe that this simple response from him last fall is going to have a, um, a really bad 
downstream set of consequences. So bless all of them, forgive their sin, Lord, and lead them all into um, a better understanding of who you are and a better understanding of how they should act with respect to who they are in you. But for each one of us, Lord, maybe we are not wrestling with a homosexual nativity scene problem in our own lives, but every one of us wrestles with the world. And I pray for victory in the name of Jesus today, for we are not able to overcome the lust of our flesh or the lust of our eyes or the pride of life. We just don't have it within us. Eve didn't, neither did Adam, and neither do we. So I'm asking for victory in the name of Jesus, that his victory might become ours, and that through his grace alone and his power alone, we may have, we may achieve, we may understand and welcome into our lives victory over these lusts, which your word promises are passing away. Father, thank you for loving us enough to give us your victory by faith. And I pray if there's anybody struggling with the concept of homosexuality as a broad issue or any individual um, problem in their lives relating to these lusts, that you would, um, you would give them peace in their heart. You would straighten out their thoughts and lead them into your amazing understanding. Give them the mind of Christ. Give us all the mind of Christ and seal that mind within us so no other idea can take us away. Thank you so much for doing this in Jesus' holy name. Bless us in that same name and give us safety until we can return back here again tomorrow to study further. Amen. And with that, friends, we are done with the Wednesday show. So thank you so much for joining us. And I hope you have a great rest of your work day if you still have that in front of you. And I will see you back here again tomorrow, Thursday, as we continue this discussion of big things that are still coming. And just in case you missed it, the reason this whole nativity scene controversy is on the eve of something big is because I don't think like this homosexual problem has been building for like 20 years now, and it has reached a level where it's getting a papal blessing. So regardless of how you feel on the issue, positive or negative, it's pretty clear the issue is not going away anytime soon. And since the prophetic picture that we get in Revelation is a, a world unified behind one set of ideas, which is a bad set of ideas, but it's unified. That's the point. The entire world is unified behind the beast. Then you know something has to happen between now and then that takes all these controversies away. Now, I don't know if you know people the way I do, but most of the time, the way that controversies get resolved on planet Earth is through violence. And I wish that weren't the case, but it just historically is the case. So whether it's actual, literal, physical violence or spiritual violence or, you know, something else, I, I just think this is a this issue with the nativity scene is a symptom of a problem that is A, not going away. And B, will get bigger and worse before it is resolved. So that's why we talked about it today. Visit tdimedia.org. Um, that's our centralized hub on the internet. And you can link to our various other presences from there. And please consider helping us out financially. There's a donate button at the bottom of that front page there. And um, uh, Talking Donkey International is a 501c3 nonprofit organization. So I'm not a tax guy, but I'm reasonably certain that your donations are in fact tax deductible. So if you have any question about that, leave us a comment or send us an email or consult your tax professional. Um, but please consider doing that. It will really help us out a lot. And you can also go to locals.com, something's happening here.locals.com and join our paid community there. It doesn't cost you very much. You get extra stuff. And that also really helps us a lot. So thank you for your consideration. Thank you for your prayers. Get a great night's sleep. And I'll see you back here on Thursday. God bless you.